performing arts are always a highlight during the school year. This year is no different as we highlight Little Mermaid. Uh, as you can see, these are the history of our playbills, uh, a rich history at Jackson Memorial High School. This year is going to be no different. As we enter the month of March, um, you're going to see the talented students here. and We're really excited to show you this year's uh, spring musical, The Little Mermaid. We are here with Ariel, everybody's main star when it comes to uh, Disney production. And I saw the costuming, everything that you have going. It's going to be an awesome show. And we're just a few short hours from really opening this thing up. Uh, what are your thoughts as we uh, start with Little Mermaid here at uh, Jackson Moore for our spring musical? Um, I'm very excited because this is one of my favorite Disney movies. And I was not expecting to get this big part. So. We are on location. I'm here with Prince Eric, who is one of our leads in The Little Mermaid. Thank you for joining me today. No problem. Tell us a little bit about the play. There's so many moving parts here. Tell us a little bit about uh, the play and one of your favorite scenes. So, uh, I play Prince Eric. My character is basically, he's a, he's a prince, but he's a, he really wants to be a sailor. He, he loves the adventure of being out in the open sea. He doesn't really want anything to do with uh, his, his royalty and his family. And um, the show is, is comprised of him uh, on his journey, and, and he finds Ariel, he finds his, uh, hears Ariel's voice, and he's, he's captivated by it, and he, he spends the rest of the show trying to find her. Now, everybody loves Disney. You know you're going to have a cast of youngsters from throughout Ocean and Monmouth County. You're going to see this play. Is there one scene that you really get excited about being in, and one play, one scene in the play that our audience is going to be mesmerized by? Yeah, I really love, uh, there's, there's a quartet uh, song in, in our, our show that I love. It's uh, it, it surprised of the four main leads, Sebastian, Ariel, uh, myself, and King Triton. Love the harmonies, it sounds great, it looks great on stage. Good, I can't wait to see it. And uh, again, we're on the eve of the big spring musical here, and uh, we're a lot of excitement in the air. Sebastian is another lead role in Little Mermaid. Um, how excited were you when you found out you had this uh, lead in the play? I was very excited. I was uh, speechless and it was something that I was hoping I would get because it's one of my dream roles and when I got that phone call that I got the part, it was one of the best things I had heard throughout my four years here. And I haven't seen it yet, but I hear you're a natural. Humorous, witty, great singing and, uh, and dancing, so we're excited to, to see that. Um, is there a favorite scene that you're really looking forward to? Ooh, definitely Under the Sea because it's uh, one of my biggest biggest scenes in the show, probably one of the biggest scenes I've ever had on this stage, and I found out this year that I can somewhat dance. Okay. So, you know, that was a plus to that scene, so I'm very excited for that. I'm joined here with Bobby Allaire, who's not only the director of the play, but she's an outstanding art teacher, puts out a great product, does a super job working with our students. Um, so welcome to the show, and, and tell me a little bit about the excitement we're feeling around the building uh, today as we get ready for, to debut Little Mermaid. Well, Spring is always exciting. I mean, it just the weather gets better, the sports. Um, but as far as the musical goes, we have uh, over 150 kids involved in this program, and uh, you know, just the nature of Disney is even making the musical even more exciting. So it's it's just a you know it's an incredible. 
incredible vibe that happens in the school. And there's a lot of excitement in the community. I can tell we've already sold uh, tons of tickets yeah. in anticipation. Yeah. This is going to be a very busy week here. Yeah. And uh, as people always say, this is not your normal high school play. It has so many different scene changes, mm -hmm. wonderful music. But tell me about the main characters this year. We have three really talented yeah, students. Yeah, we do. We, I am telling you, our Ariel looks like she should be working for Disney. Yeah. Sounds like she should be working for Disney. We have our Sebastian character, who again, a lot of flavor to him, a lot of great character. We have our Prince Eric. We have our um, uh, Tri King Triton uh, and our Mer sisters, just our Mer sisters yes. alone. The harmonies that are coming out of these girls' voices is just uh, not high, typical high school. It's not. The costuming, the choreography costuming. are really second to none. So yeah. you've never been to a, um, a high school play. This is really like I, I would feel it's off Broadway. Mm -hmm. It really is. And people come out of here with uh, just wonderful things to say. So we're really looking yeah. forward to Little Mermaid Thank this you. year. You do such a great job. In your sixth year, I understand, of running Sixth year directing. Okay. But of course, I've been involved with the musicals. I've been was the set designer since 1993 when I made four cubes, boxes that spun around and put them in the Clayton cafeteria. But uh, this is my sixth year directing, and my daughter, Jamie, has also been doing the set designs for me. She's so talented. Yeah. These sets are second to none. The she, color, uh, unbelievable. the action. Unbelievable. And the amount, the amount of work that goes into the kids building and painting, everything is soup to nuts done by students. So everything in this program is just, you know, it's all student run. It's, it's, you can see the passion in the details. Like you said, it involves over 150 kids with our set of mm -hmm. students that are working behind the scenes. And I know every spring we're recognized with some awards. Tell us about the awards these plays have won. Uh, uh, the well, we've competed in uh, Rising Stars in the past, which is Paper Mill Playhouse. Uh, we haven't competed the last two years because we've had, instead, we've had a lot of our alumni actors come back and do critiques during Tech Week. And so we feel that that's much more beneficial for the kids to have the critiques of the alumni um, specifically for our actors. So, but we have run one Rising Stars twice for set design, costume design. So, we, you know, we're competing on a different level. That's great. So here we are on the eve of Little Mermaid, um, highlighted at Jackson Memorial High School with our very own director, Miss Bobby Allaire. Good luck with everything. We're really excited. Thank you. Right. Thank you. The spring has been a busy time here in, at Jackson Memorial High School. I'm joined here with Mr. Jason Diaz. He's our band director. And as you can see, we've been very busy in the month of March with uh, the play The Little Mermaid. A lot of uh, activity there. Mr. Diaz, you actually played and got that group of musicians I, together for that. I did, I did. How was that experience? Oh, it was an excellent experience. It was a really, uh, it was a nice, um, Come back to the Disney World. We did uh, Beauty and the Beast 10 years ago, so it was really nice to come back to The Little Mermaid. And the kids were great, the musicians were fantastic. I think everything really gelled. It was probably one of the easiest processes we've had in a really long time. Is the music from Little Mermaid difficult for you guys to uh, to, to play? Or is there um, something that's pretty straight? It was, it was easier in the sense that a lot of kids knew the music from Little Mermaid, but it was also challenging in the same regard because they added new music to go along with it. So we had to not only perfect the stuff that everybody knows, but also re introduce the audience to st some new material. It was one of the finest plays in our high school's history, so thank yeah. you for your hard work on yeah. that. And at the same time, you had your mind on something else, because in a few, a few short weeks in early mm -hmm. April, we were planning for a major trip, moving a large band to mm -hmm. Orlando, Florida for our uh, large band trip. Tell us a little about the planning that went involved for the Jaguar band to fly out of Atlantic City Airport, all the way down to Orlando. Yep. It was yep. really a lot of excitement. How long, how long were you there? Uh, we were there four days. Okay, tell yep. us a little about the planning. Uh, the planning actually, uh, um, it was a long development. I think I came to you in February, and my initial plan was that um, the band actually hadn't been down to Disney in about 10 years, and it was a nice, um, a nice change of pace. Uh, we went to California four years ago, so um, 
It was about a year and a half development. It included myself, you, um, our assistant, Eric Fakara, uh, the Band Parent Association, and just moving mountains, moving 181 students. So it, let's kind of set the scene for that. So Mr. Diaz comes with a lot of paperwork and this invitation to play. Um, and the first part of this was actually going to be playing at the castle. It was. As the sun went down, yep. you guys were scheduled to play at the um, castle in, in Orlando at, at Magic Kingdom. So tell me about the excitement and the build up for that event. Oh, the build up was awesome. I mean, we found a perfect song. We found Shut Up and Dance, which is a very popular yeah. tune right now. Um, we found a great Disney medley piece. Um, and I remember us being backstage and we were lined up and they gave us a 60 second countdown and then 30 seconds and then five seconds and boom, the doors open. And then we're right in town square, right on Main Street USA. Yes, you are. Yeah, and then we came around the corner and then there's a big straightaway. And then all you see is as the sun, exactly when the sun was coming down, you see Cinderella's castle right in front of you. And then we see six, seven rows deep of people, just wall to wall people cheering the band on. It was a really, really cool experience. It was a great experience. And the castle is lit up in this bluish purple yep. color. Yep. And here comes the Jaguar band. I can't say how proud we were watching you guys with the parents mm -hmm. as you came around the corner. And it was really that, um, that one photo where the band sits mm -hmm. right at the backdrop of the castle. That's my favorite photo that they took, yeah. It's going to be really, really a memory that lasts a yeah. lifetime. And uh, you know, kudos to you for putting it together. Really, in your first full year as band director, mm -hmm. there was a huge success. Um, so a little bit more about the trip. So the students had to fundraise a year in advance to put this whole thing they did, together. They did. Uh, we need to get the chaperones mm -hmm. and take us a little bit through the process. Oh, I mean, I, I, we couldn't do, the kids couldn't have gone on this trip without the Band Parent Association. Um, they really headed up a lot of the fundraising efforts. They headed up um, really the managing of the money, making sure I, they were the liaison between the travel company. And um, I mean, we fundraised at least, you know, once. We had one fundraiser every month, you know, so every, almost, Every single kid came on the trip because of their support and their dedication and just to make sure that everybody who could go or who wanted to go could go. And, and you pulled it off, like you said, over 180 students. Yeah. And it was such a big operation that the uh, Jaguar band actually chartered its own flight. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we got everybody down there. Uh, it finally got everybody together for that first day. Yep. And it was an exhausting day, um, actually having gone with you guys as chaperone. I can tell you that it was nine to nine every day in the parks. Day mm -hmm. one, Magic Kingdom. Day two, day two we were in Hollywood Studios. Uh, day three, we went to Epcot, which was also a great experience. If you want to start with a jazz band, you know that we also kind of, in between the Epcot day, uh, the Jazz Ensemble got an invitation to play at Disney Springs. So um, we put together a half hour performance, the jazz bands, um, one of the premier ensembles here. So we thought it'd be a great experience to feature them. I know Mr. D. Junio loves um, the jazz band. Uh, we put together our competition program um, and we also added a, a fourth tune. Um, because we were at Disney, we had to do something Disney. So uh, the first thing that came to mind was The Incredibles. It has a great um, underscoring, it has that jazz setting. Uh, the kids loved it. Uh, that was, experience was really cool. Um, we were at Disney Springs and they have this stage where it overlooks a water and there's a restaurant on, if I were looking at it, on the left hand side, really nice venue in the back. Um, and we started playing and you can actually see people that weren't Jackson people started to stop and gather and we had this great crowd to help um, uh, support the program and support the, uh, um, support the performance. And, and you guys were spot on. Mm -hmm. That was a outstanding performance. And again, uh, to make us really proud wearing our Jackson um, uniforms, mm -hmm. red and black, mm -hmm. representing New Jersey. Um, it was quite an event because throughout the throughout the days we saw other bands that went through the park, and they were they were impressive as well. But you know, once the red and black came down the boulevard, mm -hmm. you knew it was something special. It's the wall of Jackson. <laughs> it really is, and that's the one thing I think is so impressive to have a high school that has a band with such a rich tradition. A lot of times when you see people out in the community, they'll say. Where are you from? You say work at Jackson the High School. They're like, oh, it has that outstanding band. Mm -hmm. That's that long history and tradition, whether it was Pasadena, California, or in Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. So um, as we move forward, pulled off an awesome trip. Is there anything on the horizon for the Jaguar band? Uh, anything we kind of let the public in on? Right now, I mean, we're looking towards next year's marching band show. So you can come out. I think our home competition is October 7th, um, next season. So we're going to get that together. Um, we're in the beginning of phases of that, maybe a parade or two. You know, I know we're definitely going down to Atlantic City the first week of September. Um, 
maybe possibly going up to New York to go uh, do the St. Patrick's Day Parade in March, possibly thinking of that. Great, you know? great. You know, it's an exciting time for our band, and one of the things that's nice is it's so comprehensive. Almost 200 students in the band. Mm -hmm. What's nice is they do lots of things. So we have swimmers on this uh, on, in this group. We have Absolutely. kids on the track team. They do all kinds of things and still fit in the time. People don't realize, I mean, I'm here in the summer with you when you see you outside doing band camp mm -hmm. in the sweltering heat going through your cadence. Yep, uh, it's very July, intense. yep, We're, we start July 7th this year, or July 11th this year. That's great. Yep. Any last thoughts from the Jaguar band director, Mr. Jason Diaz? Oh, I just, I, I'll tell you, it's been a pleasure. As Mr. DJ said, this is, I'm just finishing up my first full year here, and it has been an absolutely fantastic experience to, to, to continue the tradition um, that Bud McCormick started, and the kids are great, and I, which is a great job to have. It's great. Yeah. So again, it's a very busy spring here. We're kind of head, heading out here as we head through May. We're planning for our graduation ceremonies. Um, and in a moment, we're going to get together with our student council members who, um, if you date back to the Principal Spotlight show that we filmed back in October, we talked about their thoughts and aspirations as we headed into a new school year. So uh, we're gonna close it out with an uh, interview with our student council. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Here we are with the last few weeks of the school year, the class of 2017. Um, it all started right at this table back in uh, late September in our first Principal Spotlight show. We talked about some of the highlights, some of the aspirations for a new school year, and now we're getting ready to close it out. It went pretty fast, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's take a look back at some of the highlights from uh, this uh, school year and um, you know, get ready to celebrate your graduation as we head out for, uh, for another great time in the class of 2017. So Chris, student council president, you had a lot of responsibility this year. You had big plans for uh, for the school. We did. Um, how do you think the school year went overall? Uh, I think this year our uh, tradition in the school we continued great tradition. Uh, the atmosphere in the school really helped helped make a memorable senior year. Classes went well. There really wasn't anything to complain about. Academics, athletics, everything went well. So I think overall we had a successful year as the class of 2017. We did, and when we spoke at this table, we were really excited to open a new school year, a new weight room, some new technology rooms, uh, the STEM program, um, you know, heading in that great direction that it's going. Um, you know, did you feel that you met your expectations, and what were some of the highlights for you personally as uh, the student council president? Um, I know you got early decision to the college that you were talking about back in September. Tell us about that. Uh, I did get early decision into Florida State. I'm going to be majoring in economics. Uh, definitely, I never took a business class in high school until this year. I took macro, AP macro, and Miss Scott did a phenomenal job. So I, I got a foot in the door in the business world. So I'm excited Good about it. Good for you. Go Seminoles. Going to be excited to follow uh, Florida State. Um, and we have Larry, who's the vice president of the uh, student council. Larry's also heading to Florida. Yep. You know, you were kind of really excited, started a new football season. Yeah. Um, tell us you're heading to Florida. What college are you going to? University of Tampa. Excellent. Yep. Good, good for you. Tell us a little bit back, looking back at the uh, senior year for you, how'd it go? It was a great year. I mean, I had so much fun with my friends from the football team. Even though we didn't win state together, we made it to the semifinals. That was just so much fun. And moving into the wrestling season, we went on and won a championship there again. Just being with friends made this year really special. That's great. And, you know, when you talk about the class of 2017, it wasn't long ago when you guys were at Getz Middle School, your little eighth graders, sitting in fine arts, and next thing you know, uh, you're leaders of the school, and I want to thank you and compliment you on your leadership from the student council perspective. You really did a nice job leading the class. I'm excited to see you guys at graduation. Hey, Lara, is there one teacher that stands out, somebody that you're going to say, I remember that teacher in that class. That was my favorite. Mr. Harrington, physics. Excellent. I loved that class. You had him this year? <laughs> No, I had him last year. You did? Last well, year, second semester. What were some of the experiments you did in uh, Harrington's class? I know some, he has some classics. My favorite was the egg drop, where we went out and uh, had to construct something to keep an egg from breaking. We dropped it off the top of the bleachers out in the football field. Mine was the only project that worked. All right, very <laughs> nice. So physics at Jackson Memorial. Physics, Good times. And Chrissy, your senior year, you had lots of aspirations moving into this year. Mm -hmm. We were talking about planning pep rallies and yes. all kinds of things like that. Mm -hmm. um, how did it go? How was the school spirit this year? Um, honestly, I think we all enjoyed it really well. I think Powder Puff was a huge success. We wanted to do it in the spring, but we didn't want to ruin like how good it was in the fall, so we kind of like dismissed that. Okay. Um, now we're all getting ready for prom. It's really like hard, but almost every single one in the senior class is going. We have our almost full like 
everyone in the senior class is probably going to go. Exciting. So great prom season coming up. Powder Puff was a lot of fun. It was. And it was a really competitive game, <laughs> as always. Um, I, I saw, recently saw the yearbook pictures from that. It was oh, a you did? beautiful night. Yeah. It was a warm night with a great fall backdrop. Um, and it all seems to go so fast. Yeah. You know, your senior year, you have so many memories that you make. So much fun, but I can tell you this yearbook is really special. Mm -hmm. They customized the front cover. Uh, Chris, you brought, actually brought that down. It was yeah. really nice. Chris, where are you going to college next year? I'm going to Mountain University. And what are you going to major in? Uh, elementary education. Oh, I love cool. kids and I want to teach them. Yeah, I'm really excited. Good for you. Thanks. Well, we're really excited. You guys brought so much energy to the school this year. It was a really successful school year. Um, and I always say great kids make great schools. So thank you for all your contributions. And we look forward to following you. Uh, and your successes in college. Remember, you're always a Jaguar first. Thanks, guys.